Hey everyone, welcome to today's podcast episode. This is Matthew Lilly. I'll be your host for the day. And I have a couple of special guests with us, Susie Urai and David Valier. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Oh, thank you. Yes, if you um, probably have heard David's voice on the podcast before, he's been on at least one episode, maybe a couple of episodes. He is uh, on staff with Awaken the Dawn, uh, overseeing all things worship and creative and more, and uh, was also at Morningstar for years as a worship director there, songwriter, worship leader. Uh, if you don't know Susie, uh, Susie is a friend of ours who's, uh, uh, I'm going to read her bio here, passionate worshiper, poet, songwriter. She's influenced and mentored some of our favorite worship leaders. So Kim Walker-Smith, Josh Baldwin, John Mark, Sarah McMillan, Misty Edwards, Jonathan Melissa Helser, Brian and Jen Johnson. You guys probably know a number of people on that list, you, whether you know Susie or not, you know her through uh, those that she's been able to impact now for decades uh, in just being a spiritual mom and a, uh, a worship leader, a mentor uh, to many of those uh, people. She's been involved at Bethel, Morningstar, traveled all over the place, and uh, it's just a huge honor uh, to have you on the podcast today, Susie. So welcome. Yeah, so uh, obviously today we want to talk, take some time today, talk about worship, talk about creativity. We'll we'll kind of go and see where the Holy Holy Spirit leads leads this conversation. Uh, worship is hugely important to awaken the dawn. I know it's obviously it's important to you guys as well. So maybe we could just kind of like open up the floor, like what is worship? Why is it important? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like why does it matter? You know why do why should we do it? And uh, why does it matter how we do it? So maybe we can just start there and uh, see where it goes. Why, why is worship important, Susie? <laughs> oh, my word. Let's see. Do we have three days? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, it is easy to simplify. It's like if you, for me, worship is, of course, we're all going to say it's a lifestyle. But mostly we, David and I, and actually you too, Matthew, we are connected through musical worship and the worship mm -hmm. arts. And that's, of yeah. course, my love. We love musical worship and we love the worshiping arts. And um, I think it's a matter of understanding. It's really, as especially as a musician, it's the air we breathe and it's a matter of a relationship with Jesus Christ that's personal and bringing that into the earth. So everything that comes through your instruments and your art and your breath is connected to your personal relationship, which is growing all the time and bringing forth, I think, into the earth your connection with God so that others can be connected. I mean, it's just, it's breathing, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? Wow. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, uh, I mean, it's what we were born to do. I mean, it's just that simple. Yeah. It's like, like Susie it's said, it, it is, it is like breathing because it's, it, to, to me at this point, uh, I'm freshly 35, uh, in my mind, I'm old, but, uh, you know, uh, but whatever, uh, I, I missed you missed my birthday, Susie, you missed my birthday. <laughs> you were over in Mexico, just having a great time. No, you're in Switzerland, actually, just somewhere gallivanting around the world. Um, but, uh, yeah, so at this point, worship to me, if I don't have it in my daily, if I don't have it, you know, g going, you know, just through me all the time, it is like, I cannot survive. It's like, I, I cannot survive mm. without connection with the Lord. I'm just at that, that space in my life. And, um, I, I agree. Worship is important because it's literally what we were born to do and, once you get a taste of it, I mean, there's no greater high. There's no greater thing that you just say, I cannot get enough of this. It's because we were made to do it here on earth, but then in eternity, you know, forever and ever. So it's going to be, it's just, it's just what we're meant to do. It's just who we are. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I love the way we, David we, said the connection because that's really yeah. important. And we are the ones that are going to connect people who don't have that connection 
yeah. to the one, the one true God, the only real love. The only way to learn to love is through the one true God. And we can't live without that connection. And we want the world to know. I mean, I'm passionate about that. And that's, I'm really proud of you, Matthew, and your book. And I'm also proud, proud of David and Awaken the Dawn, both Davids, because they, that's what they want to do. They want to connect the people who are really hurting and lost and needing that connection. Mm. So if we're living that way and feeling like what David just said, we are going to make a difference, even if we're just walking around. But the music, the music just transforms people. Yeah. So, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love that you guys really didn't even talk about what most people think about when they hear worship. Because most people, when you say worship, they're going to go towards what's happening on a stage, what's happening on a platform, oh, the band, just... the the oh. band playing, and all that kind of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you guys are talking about intimacy with the Lord and and relationship yeah. and connection with Him in all in all of your life. I love that. Yeah, the stage. Yeah. The stage, as as I always say, I'm from, I'm Cajun, right? I'm from Louisiana. The stage to me is what we call lanyap. That means extra. So it, <laughs> it, in Cajun French, and so that that's just like that's just like a, a nice little, you know, side thing. But man, if you're living for that, or you know, that's kind of the expression of worship. There is, let me just fill you in. There is so much more. I mean, mm. you want to talk about amazing worship moments? Get in your car, turn on your favorite worship song. And sing at the top of your lungs, you, you're, you're gonna you're gonna connect with the Lord more than you're gonna connect with ten thousand people. I'm just saying, like you get in those little moments where you're singing a song to the Lord that makes absolutely That's no fine. sense, but you're just trying to get through it, and you're crying and you're laughing, and or as Susie says, you're clapping, um, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> cry laughing, um, you know, right. those moments with the Lord are what mark you. And man, that's, that's when, you yeah. know, man, this is a lifestyle. Yeah. This is literally what, you know, we were meant to do, but anyway, lest I preach. No, it's good. The platform, if you, if we think that's what worship is about, we're going to be highly disappointed, but that's okay. If you're feeling that and you, then you will get disappointed. That's a good spot too. just take your disappointment and get there, get that personal Jesus going, just cultivating mm. that all the time. Of course, we're going to process this thing out. And, and I, really i think i'm so grateful for the platforms too but re remember what you're there for always you know try to remind yourself and each other as a community of worshipers what you're there for to to really bring the atmosphere of the presence of god that people could get closer to him that's the only point and it, it's it can every platform needs to under every platform needs to have that foundation i think Throughout the community of worshipers, I mean, we need to really mm. remind ourselves why we're why he gave us. Why did he give you a platform? You know, think seriously about that. Now, don't get too serious, but get serious. You know, <laughs> don't take yourself too seriously. But let's 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 focus on the presence of God to uh, bring people into His love. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I love it. That's it. That's not that's not exactly the answers I was expecting, but it's perfect. I love it. <laughs> it's exact. It's exactly right. <laughs> sure. I mean, you know, we the podcast is not necessarily for worship leaders or musicians, singers. I'm sure we have a load of those because that's just sort yeah. of the ATD world. Is where all is we have so many musicians and singers and worshipers uh, sort of in our orbit. Um, but I'm glad you guys took it broad and talked about relationship with the Lord and, and a lifestyle yeah. of worship and, and intimacy with God and staying connected yeah. with him because that is the foundation of all that we it do, is. whether it's on a platform or, or in our relationships with others, ministering to others. Um, it all starts there. So, um, it Hey, Susie, there, would, <laughs> th there you go. That's right. Which David just mentioned <laughs> all, all eternity, right? right. Yeah. Hey, Susie, I'd, I'd love to, uh, I'd love to, you know, just like here, let you share a little bit about your journey in leading worship and uh, a little bit of the story and the history of, of kind of, you know, how you, get, how you got started with that. And maybe there's some, some things we could glean from your story and from your, 
your, your history as well. How did you start quote unquote leading worship? <laughs> well, let's see my story. Um, yeah, so I was a professional singer in Nashville singing with, um, famous recording artists in the country music, uh, genre. Um, and I had an encounter with the Lord with, uh, a, a, a stylist who was doing, uh, I was with singing with Reba McIntyre at the time, and her stylist, stylist was a, a spirit fell, a Christian, a very strong Christian. And um, through all of that, I had an encounter, and then I met John Potter at a Bible study. And, of course, he was a well-known producer in, in Nashville. And then he is the one who brought me to Morningstar, where I had a massive encounter with the Holy Spirit in, I think it was 96. And I left everything for to follow it was pretty it was a it was a ma- major encounter which i want to talk about that because some people don't have those and they still want to love god and i don't want people to think just because they haven't had an encounter anyway i have a lot on that but i had an encounter and i left everything i was trying to get a record deal and um i had some problems i was overcoming and i had a i had the testimony is a little bit deeper than that but um so then i ended up at morningstar and they wanted then gone moved uh to north carolina to help with morningstar worship and then they asked me to come to and that's really how it all happened and then i started i was already writing songs um and then i started writing a lot more and my songs are a little bit different um and then i at first didn't understand why also worship was a little bit unique and different. The way we were trained was to sing more spontaneously and singing like this uh, song of the Lord and the spiritual songs there. It's all in the Bible. And um, so I was raised that way. <laughs> I was raised that way. So it was a little bit different. I didn't know about the church. I didn't know what worship was like in any other church because that was my first church was with Don and Leonard, Don Potter and Leonard and Rick Joyner was saying, do, do whatever you want. So we were writing our own songs and we were dancing a lot, a lot of crazy. It looked a little crazy to a lot of people. But um, fortunately for most people, it was a move of the spirit was happening. And so... You could look overlook maybe the parts that were just fleshy. <laughs> Us getting free kind of looks can look funny. So um it was great. And that's where I met David years later. So we all have the same David and I have the same DNA and uh, my best friend Molly, she works she works with me a lot now and um well we've been working together for twenty five years. But um so we have that DNA and it's it's a little unique. So the journey has been unique. Um I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah. But definitely when I left Morningstar, I didn't know that I was a little bit immature in a way. I, I thought most people did what we were doing. I didn't really understand. And I was late getting saved. I was 35, you know, when I came to know the Lord. So, I mean, I have a which lot is, more. Which is really old, right, David? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was David James when I met the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> really, I didn't start totally leading till I was. My leading really started at like forty-ish, thirty-nine, forty-ish. Yeah, so that was pretty late. Yeah, yeah. Well, so. it. That's an interesting con- context to grow up in. I re- I remember. I mean, it was probably it was probably around twenty years ago. The first time I went to Morning Star to one of the worship conferences, you know, as a <laughs> in my late in my late teens and. It, I mean, it, it, I was not used to that. And so for me, yeah. it was pretty, it was weird and wild. Yes. And I, and I didn't, I didn't know what, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know if you guys were saved or not, honestly. And uh, See, <laughs> I was like, for me, but that's what right. people said when they came, but right. that's how I learned. And so it is a very odd yeah. story. Yeah. I think I think that's why <laughs> I, I think that's why I was attracted to them. Cause I was like, I don't know if these guys are Christians, but I like them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is cool. <laughs> uh, I can I tell a really funny story just in that context, real quick, Matthew. You know, just for all the oh, go for it. Um, so 
you know, I grew up Assemblies of God, uh, <laughs> real young, real, you know, traditional, that kind of thing. And so I was I was a little bit introduced to Morningstar, you know, just through some CDs, but never heard anything. But I remember the first time I heard them, I was like, wow, this is different, like interesting. And then uh, anyway, so fast forward a couple of years, I'm in a hotel room, I think with our youth group or something. And uh, it was either TBN or Sky Angel was playing some worship stuff. And so I look on the TV and I am looking at what I'm thinking is like a, a clip from Woodstock, but like, but like, you know, but like current, cause it's all these people in overalls and they're moving all, you know, like this. And then I see someone that I, I, I literally said this out loud. I said, Oh my God. I was like, Ellen DeGeneres got saved. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I was like, she's going crazy on the stage. And I was like, and then there's a guy, and then a guy who looks like our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ is playing the guitar and these guys rule. I was like, who are these people? And I realized right there, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I realized right there, it was Susie and Leonard Jones. And from that day, I remember I went home and I was like, mom, I found my people. I'm going, when I turn 18, I'm gone. And I did the, like a, a week or two after I turned 18, got in my car, drove to North Carolina. And then here's the cherry on top for that story. The first Sunday I get here, Susie leaves. <laughs> the whole reason I moved, I, I moved to Charlotte to be like, I need to get to know this person. And then her and Cameron are like, we're leaving. And I was like, ah, oh! <laughs> but anyway, started my whole journey. Oh my gosh. And, uh, it was in 2006. I did. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and we left. yeah. And so anyway, it was, uh, it, it, I just am so grateful that I stumbled upon that and found these people because man, it was a sound that like, it just changed my life. And, uh, mm. and I'm, so happy that I stumbled upon that. So, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I know I said it. It was that it was weird, and it is. And it is, it is a culture shock if you're not used to it. But there was also something appealing about. Oh it, yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. Was, I mean, if, if that was appealing, right? The presence of God. Was, <laughs> yeah, it was the presence of God, and also we have to remember there was a move of God happening in that time. Mm. Yeah, in, for in sure. That time when it started. And the music it was in Browns, Brownsville and Toronto. But right. Her music was very unique. It was cool. It was very unique, and it did start another little move of its own. Mm -hmm. And at that same time, God TV started, and they came there first. Yeah. They're the ones that sort of they, that was a platform. You see, there's many platforms. We were talking about that earlier. Don't forget too, your church is not your only platform. Yeah. I suggest you go out on the streets and worship. I did that for several years on my own. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, um, that's good. So that's good. They, they gave Morningstar a big platform, and that's really how our worship, Don, particularly John and Leonard and myself, our worship got catapulted into the nations was because of God TV. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a whole timing thing with the Lord, and I feel like he wants... I mean, a little, some of it was crazy. Like Bob Jones used to say, don't worry, or I think Rick too, don't worry if it looks funny. They're not all totally, no one, none, none of us are totally perfectly in the spirit because it says in the Bible, we only hear in part, but let's let each other have some room yeah. to experiment and grow in the Holy Spirit. And let's not judge each other and call each other names. Let's let each other experiment with this this amazing atmosphere for this. You want the Holy Spirit to move, you're going to have to allow for some room for some, it seems like a mess, but it's not. It's a learning. It's not even failure. It's room to grow and learn. Yeah. So I feel like mm. we need to get back to that again. Mm. That's really my heart now. I, I'm doing a whole new sort of, what do you call it? I was going to retire. Not because I think I'm too old, just because I thought maybe it was time. I don't know what I was thinking, but now I'm going to start a whole new thing. I'm doing a new website. I'm doing a, a worship union, um, worship consultation, and I'm doing all my courses, and I'm just going to do one more like, come on, world, let's get the Holy Spirit and understand what worship really is and how it can change people. Yeah. So that's my new, mm. I'm on it again, I'm excited, and um, yeah. That's it. You know what? Give the platform to the Holy Spirit. How about that? Mm. Yes. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. 
So a- after a couple of visits to Morningstar, you know, I was I was totally on board, and uh, and then I was the weird one, and then I would go back home, and we would do these, we would do the worship nights, and we would start adding in art and dancing and spontane spontaneous stuff, and 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 then we got weird, and so then we were we were we were all in. It didn't take long, but that initial shot was real. Um, I wanted to ask you guys. <laughs> Or, or that most, most of them didn't get mad. Most of them just left. But then some people loved it and some people came yeah. that didn't come before, right, you know? Right. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I won't. We can't judge them. Sure. Because, hey, I mean, I would walk in and think, you know. Sure. That's weird. We right. To, we have to love Every, each other too, and also I want yeah. I would contain like I'm different. I'm older now, and I would be able to go anywhere now and sort of not contain what I do, but bring it to different types of fellowships to where they can get it yeah. and not be you know prideful about right. it and come to come to them with a package of in a in a humble way and say, "What if you try this?" You know what I'm saying? So that's also my new. My new goal. I'm getting calls from places that don't really know if they want to follow the Holy Spirit. So I can go in and say, hey, this is what probably will happen. And you know what? God's not going to be mad at you if you don't. He's not what we think. He loves us all anyway. But with the power of the Holy Spirit and the worshiping arts, something really amazing happens. And it's, it's really, I want to say, more life more the life of Christ in it. Mm. He said he left his Holy Spirit for specific things and it really does make a difference. Yep. But we just can't judge each other and keep thinking. We can't be prideful about you know, our walks. You know, you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. I think the older no. I get, the more I can just have the bigger, 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 bigger picture for all of humanity. I love that. But I still want to bring my message. I still want people to see and understand and maybe say, you know what, let's try the Holy Spirit. I feel mm. some, I feel life. I want to feel life, you know? Yeah. I love that you are, are, are mentioning the fact that what was happening at Morningstar was a move of the Spirit. What you want people to experience now is a move of the Spirit. Because yeah. sometimes when you start talking about worship and even trying to be creative in worship, people start thinking about the form mm-hmm. and just the external expression that's happening. And they think that that's the main yeah. thing that's happening. They see, Oh, it looks different on stage. And sometimes people don't realize, I feel like that what's, that what's really happening is something's happening inside of people. Something's the Holy mm-hmm. spirit is doing mm-hmm. something. And then that's mm-hmm. coming, that's coming out of people. And, um, and so I, I, I wanted to talk about sort of the, the wildness and uniqueness you guys have. <laughs> that was actually on my list of things to ask about. I mean, I, I remember in Kansas city, we just did this massive awaken the dawn tent a couple of months ago. And you guys let a set together right before Heidi Baker spoke. And it was, uh, it, was it, it was awesome. And it was personally so refreshing to me because of the unique sound. There were a couple moments that week where a couple different groups really brought a creative sound and you guys were certainly one of them. And, um, and so maybe, maybe we could talk a little bit more about that because, you know, some people are going to go, Oh, well, we should just be more creative or more weird, but it's really not about being weird. No. Is it? It's no, no. <laughs> that, that's, that's not the heart of it. So maybe talk about more no. of like the heart of it. What's kind of like happening underneath the surface. That's, that's kind of creating this outward expression. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Can, can I give a couple of, yes, of basic of things real quick? And I'm sure Susie will have some in depth, but I think one of the, the things that I learned in my time at Morningstar was and, and Matthew, I'm sure you've heard this phrase as well, but just like the indigenous sound of hmm. of your tribe, of your people, of, of, of you know, of your, your culture. And one of the things I think that kind of sneaks into the worship culture is there's there's a sound that comes out and then everyone just tries to duplicate it, you know, and e- even right. down to the motions. I'm seeing e- even now, I'm just going to call it out like. 
you know, a popular anointed yeah. worship leader starts moving a certain way. Well, then you got everybody running around the stage like that person or, you know, doing this guy. There's this like mm-hmm. pacing thing that's really popular now. <laughs> Stresses me out. I'm just going to be honest. But like there's a, a, pa- <laughs> no, a pacing. Know. Everyone just paces. But anyway, um, I, oh, I, that's I, true. That's I'm kind of like, hey, like what what does you and your church or your community sound like? You know, and it and yeah, that might be exactly. that might be country music. That might be uh, that might be modern worship. That might be kind of more of like me and my band, which is kind of like I don't know exactly what we are, but we really like a backbeat and we like a lot of of synth yes. and wave and that kind of stuff. But like it's just who we are, and so I don't even think you be yes, Matthew. Right. I, like you were saying, I don't think it's we're not trying to be different or weird. We're just being ourselves, and it's our expression to the Lord. But here's the key as a worship leader, you have to find a way to make that translate and bring other people in. So I think one of the things that people can hear people like myself and Susie, who are like, go beyond the normal, you know, push the boundaries. Then they forget to take the people with them. I, you know, I, I think, (laughs) but that's not what Susie and I are saying. It's be yourself, but also find that, that balance of, bringing your unique sound but but bring the people with you into that space and i think personally over the years susie has mastered that i've seen susie be 100 percent herself but she's found a way to to almost coach the people yeah. in and That's and right. there's a way to do it and so all that to say matthew is you can be wild you can be unique you can be different which i beg you to be not for the sake of being different but i <laughs> beg you to be yourself and to have your indigenous sound, because I think once worship communities can start tapping into that, but then also having the pastoral and leader leadership, you know, um, capabilities to bring the people in and to point them to Jesus. When you have that balance, mwah, the chef's kiss, it's a beautiful thing. And so, so like, um, yeah, that's what I would encourage. It's like, man, find your sound, find your expression, but then also find a way to point them to the Lord in a really, really intentional way. Um, so anyway, I hope that answers that question, at least from my perspective. But I, I just it gets me excited because I, I feel like that's where the church has the potential of going if, if we will allow it. So, I mean, a great example of this was Susie. I, I, you can, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Just real quick, when we were in Kansas City, there was this moment where you started doing this dance. I don't even remember what it was. It was like with your arms. Do you remember doing this thing? It was like, it was in, in. Uh, but oh, you got, for heaven's sakes, I don't remember. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, oh, David yeah, remembers it. Remember. In and out. Yeah. And, and you got, that. you got the whole tent. I mean, it's thousands of yeah. people, 7, people. Yeah. doing this, to, doing this together. I said, everybody do this. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's real simple. Include them. It's not about you. It's not about your great song. It's not right. about your, your you now you're a famous worship leader and you're, there's six thousand people there. It's about get getting them to follow the Holy Spirit with you. If you yeah. really learn how to do that, they're gonna start leading. And that happened twice in that meeting. The children started leading twice. Yeah. And you have to be watching, you gotta watch you can't just get up there with your eyes closed the whole time and your great song. No, who cares? Who cares anymore? The people are waiting for connection. They're waiting. The people are hungry. That's why they were there. And, and and some of the worship songs are fabulous, and they did come to hear those worship songs. If you're drawing people with your songs, let's get real now. Now you've got people coming. Now think about those people. They're bringing friends that aren't saved. Their children are in the front row waiting for an encounter. Now you, you're. You're great. You're writing these songs that are the whole world are singing. The Housers are the really some of the best examples. They're writing songs the whole world is singing, and they're still paying attention to what the Lord wants to do in the moment with the people in front of them, and they're bringing it, and they're connecting them to Jesus. And a lot of people are. I'm just saying, if you're not, you can learn now. It's never too late. And I love that God is still. People hate. No, people don't hate. People don't like that word famous. And, when God makes you famous, God makes you famous. It's okay. Now take your fame, calm down, and get the people connected. So twice the mm. children took over and started singing. Um, and 
we liked them, so I was paying attention. Molly was paying attention. David was paying attention. And suddenly, we heard a sound because we were waiting in quiet on the floor. And it was the children. They were singing, Our God is a Great God. So we took that song, and then I said, Everyone sing that. The children are leading us now. And then they all sing. And you let them sing it as long until you feel it's it's over. Just let the crowd take, let the people, not the crowd, the people who are connecting now, let them lead the way for a minute and then go back and find your way. That's following the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And taking them with you is way easier than you think. Keep your eyes open and connect with their eyes. You're going to see some people looking at you really mean, and that's why sometimes we keep our eyes closed. They're not really. They're, they're probably getting deliverance or getting having an encounter. Maybe they don't know what's happening, and then you can see them crying, laughing, bubbling over. You know, you want to see because there's the connection. And when I look at the people and listen to the musicians, I, that's the main thing I do. Watch the people. Hear the Lord, listen, try to listen to the Lord at the same time and listen to all the musicians, mostly the piano and the, well, all of them. And then I started to flow like that, and I'm older now, so I'm I'm a little bit more experienced, so I can process all of that at the same time pretty quickly Mm -hmm. And, okay, what are we doing? What do we want to do? And you can give me 10 minutes, I'm going to do it. You can give me 40 minutes, I'm going to do it. It doesn't matter. I'm going to connect and I'm going to do my best to to get people into the encounter and the connection with God. Oh, I was looking on my phone a minute ago. Sorry, I was looking down. Um, I got I always get messages. You know, I love social media for messaging and people telling me a guy. I got a lot of messages from that Kansas City event that I was so honored to be at. And this one guy's message, I can't find it. Oh man, he was just, he was a worship leader and he was just completely changed. He said, I'll never be the same. I can't wait to study and grow in this. So I have to find his name because I want to send him my worship courses I'm doing uh, that will help him understand a little bit more what's, what he's going through. Anyway, just to process that out. And yeah, uh, I think I'm so proud of David because he understands what the, a lot about the Holy Spirit and how he does live in us and how we are so unique. The only re- the reason we would all be different if we wanted to is because we are so unique. No way is any of us alike. And it's okay to copy each other, but it's really cool to eventually find who you are and love who you are. Like you've got to fall in love. You've got to find your, your model, like David said. Then you got to fall in love with that. Oh, God made me this way. I struggled with that. There was times I struggled, like I don't fit in. Um, I need to be like some of them so I can go places. I can't go different places. People don't really like me. I had to go through that, and I had to literally fall in love with the way God made me. And it was not an overnight (laughs) success. (laughs) But now I am. Right in the beginning, but it, it was a painful journey. But that's part of the process too. The pain, you should use the pain to steer you again into the personal worship, you know. So um when you find out who you are, you start to really let that music and that the worshiping art, the renaissance of the worshiping arts come through you the way he made you. You're gonna fall in love with yourself. And didn't Jesus say Love your neighbor as yourself? Well, how are you going to love your neighbor? How are you going to get the true worship out? If you don't even love yourself and you're just copying others all the time, I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. There's fabulous worship songs out there. We all know that. I sing I sing hymns. I sing hill song, whatever. I sing whatever I love. Elevation has some great songs. But you start being yourself. People will get healed through that faster. I don't know why. You be yourself, you'll be well, love yourself, you'll be well, they'll be well. It just, I can't tell you everything about it now. There's scriptures about it, but it's true. Everything David said is true, and we need to keep preaching it. Mm-hmm. And talking about it in our communities yeah. and creating the communities. Like we created a community at Morningstar that said, be yourself and 
and even we have some rules, do some familiar songs. If you're going to do a new song, do something they know first. Keep the people connected. Gather them together. Gather the flock. Honor the flock. Then bring the new song. And teach as you go. Molly was the one that said, Susie, since we're so unique, you should start doing two or three minute quick teachings before the worship. Because there's new people coming in and say, here's what we're doing. Here's the scripture to help you. Everything we did at Morning Star is in the Bible. Now I have, that's what my worship courses are for. Here's, here's the biblical journey of what we did. And anyway, Molly was always pra- practical and helped me to understand. And now I'm that way too. I'm, I'm pragmatic anyway, but um, to mm-hmm. help people enter in. It's all about the world and humanity. It's not about us. Mm-hmm. But I'm so happy to be uh, a musical worshiper, yeah. you know. It's so the best. That I'm, that it's the best. <laughs> well, Susie, I appreciate you being honest about some of your own struggles with insecurity and things like that in, oh in being able to, to just be yourself. Because I think a lot of people who've probably experienced you are probably like, Oh, well, she doesn't care what anybody thinks at all. But I, well. I, and so, so many people, so many people are, I mean, are riddled with fear and anxiety and insecurity. Well, Let's just be honest. Yeah. We have it. Yeah. And I still struggle. Now it sure. changes. Listen, it's going to stay. Here's the deal. There is, there is, principalities that uh, we, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but powers and principalities. Okay. Those powers and principalities are never going to go away until Jesus comes back and they hate us. Anyone who's trying to follow the Holy Spirit is, guess what? Ooh, yeah. target. Whoops. So what you do is you just grow. You grow in your faith. You grow in your confidence in God. You grow in loving yourself and it's going to change. It's going to come back and knock you over again. All the different phases of my life, now the big guy is, you're too old, you're too old. No, I'm not. You are not. Anyway, I don't know who that person is in the mirror anymore, but I'm still 20. <laughs> it's not that. And what you yeah. do is you learn to quickly, because people are battling massive anxiety and depression. I'm having anxiety attacks in the night. Don't even know. There is, okay, let's see. There's no reason. We're not going to do this, so I just do my way. No, we're not doing this. I just start talking. We have a scripture. By the way, if you don't stay in the word, it's going to be hard. You got to get in the word. You got to get in the word again. Everyone get in the word. I just. Man. <laughs> telling you. It's really alive. It's it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you in your life. So that's how I do it. Yeah. It goes away. It comes again. Yeah. You know what? But I don't like to focus on warfare, but you know what? It's not going to go away, but we are going to get more confident in God. Yeah. Not necessarily in our own, because I have a strong will, not necessarily in my own strong will, but in, in God. So I have to fight for that too. I think, oh, I have too much. Like, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Um, mm. But I have to remember, no, I need to let God do it. So. Yeah. <laughs> so you, just, you said it. Right. No, you said a couple of things in there. I felt like were such so helpful. Is like one, we have to know God's love for us, so that we can learn to to love ourselves. We have to learn to process too, isn't it? Constant, lifelong. Right. Yes, totally. At worshiping by by ourselves, you know, which kind of comes back to that, where it's not just on the stage, where we learn to worship. Mm-hmm in the way we were, where we can be free when no one's looking and then experience the father's approval and his love and his yeah. delight over us as we're honest with them. And then getting in the yeah. word. I mean, all of those I think are help yeah. us get free of some of that stuff. So David, I'm and sure you have some to thoughts without, too. I'm trying to do it all without like a major religious sort of, you know, I have to do this because I, because I'm a Christian. You know, you right. Have to drop that. We have to drop the, I have to do something because I'm a Christian and go to the phrase, I need to connect with the Lord because he loves me. Mm. So we've got Come to on. do our language has to change. Also, I have a really great suggestion. Some of my favorite worship teams across the earth do this. And I've done it. And I'm going to, I'm going to actually talk to David and our community about it. 
You gonna get your friends together and worship alone? Not not a home group. You're gonna set everything up like people are there. You're gonna use a sound system. You don't have to, but and you're not gonna have any people, and you're just gonna worship for two or three hours together. Um all to God. So I know you people have done it in different ways, but I just wanna throw that out there again. Uh, get together with your friends and just at least once a month, you know, I'm gonna try to go for Maybe every other month right now because everyone everyone I know is so busy. But I'm going to get them gather together at my little film barn where I have a good PA. And I want to just start worshiping to God with uh, my friends, David and our friends. So uh, I have friends that have gone out in the desert with the generators, pulled a worship teams, like 20, the whole worship department. And one of my friends has a worship department in Germany. They used to go out to the desert once a year with a generator and just worship God just with the worship department. In the desert, can you imagine how that would be cool? That encounter, I mean, so there's cool. all kinds of things like that to think about to do as a mm. community. Um, yeah. worshipers, I'm, I'm yeah. excited, I'm going to do it again. So, and you're saying that God, those things that. help help people find their sound, right? Because they there's not the yeah. all the pressure of everything else, they can learn yeah, to be themselves, funny. right? Yeah, that can also help you find your sound. I didn't think that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so many things, so many things can happen. You're gonna find a new sound. You're gonna end up writing so many songs together. You know what I mean? Right. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Yeah. What else can <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> totally. People might be aggravated with each other. They can tell them each other they're sorry. Hmm. There you go. That's good. David. Something like that. You got any, got any thoughts on, on this? I mean, I think Susie covered quite a bit of it. I mean, I, I you could just talk about you could talk about this for days and days and hours and hours and go from so many different angles, um, you know. But I, I I I do just honestly what Susie said. I just give it a resounding yes uh, because I think that there's just so yeah. many practical keys to that to to this. And I think one thing that I appreciate about some of the angles in which we're talking today is they're not your typical worship discussions. Like we're, you know, you, you get what I mean? And like, <laughs> listen, this is the kind of stuff that needs to be discussed. This is what results in, in sustainability. This is what results in not having this phrase that, you know, we're hearing, especially in like, you know, the deconstruction and all that kind of movement, like burnout or, you know, uh, you know, these kinds of things is when you have these kind of, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Even practices, disciplines in your life, you don't lose interest. You don't burn out because this is what keeps you going. It's, it's the core. It's not the ministry moments. It's not the stage moments. It's not even the highly anointed moments, you know, in a staff meeting. It's, it's you and you and Jesus and like, not even in a prayer room. Cause I think that's one thing I'm, I'm even hearing pushed more than like personal relationship. It's like getting a prayer room. no, don't even get in the prayer room. Get in your car with Jesus. Then do the other stuff. <laughs> I'm just saying. Jesus. I noticed that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Worship. Exactly. Get in those moments. Sit in your garden. Yeah, wherever you need to do, what is it that you don't, you don't need another person? Yes. Mm -hmm. also, the I Bible. I want to say one thing, David, quickly. Man, man, now that's, yeah. Find your Bible. Find your version. I love all versions. Um, I want to say something real quickly because I just finished the worship school where we talked about this a lot. And, um, like, looking, like, people, what I get a lot, and I think David may get a little, but I get a lot, of course, is, well, you know, this, this is the way God made you, your personality. I'm not going to be able to worship like that. And I personally, I don't want to look like you. We discussed this already, but I want to say a little bit more about that. Obviously, I am, I'm, I've been super different all my life. Before I knew Jesus, I was very different, very unique. I was always, I don't like fads. I would wear bowling shoes to school and my father's ties. I was very, so yes, I was made this way, super adventurous. And I didn't have a lot of fear all my life before I was saved. So yes. When I got saved, I, 
my yes that's my personality but like david what we're what we're saying is still you want the power of the holy spirit and the power of what about the holy trinity coming through to change the heart of humanity you see this is the key so don't worry but what you're afraid of what you're gonna look like you see so many people are afraid well if you're afraid of what you're gonna look like then you're definitely not cultivating your personal worship and it's scary it's like my personal worship is for my times alone at home or my times in the car no it's really not so that's what we're saying you're not gonna look like me you're not gonna look like david you're not gonna look like jen johnson who's awesome you're not gonna look like kimmy walker you're gonna i want we want you to find yourself find what you're whatever you look like and it might take a while and keep copying someone if you want to but eventually the thing is is to get over the fear of what you're going to look like when you get free and you're actually on a platform i think that's the thing i have people ask me that all the time well i don't want to get that free because i don't want to look foolish like you and that's the bottom line wow that's the bottom line now they're being more honest with me. Right. And in Europe, people are more honest anyway. They're like, well, we don't want to look I mean, we're <laughs> close to you. And I'm like, well, look at me now. I mean, you don't, you don't need to. You don't have to. But, but, you're, but you're, if you're still fighting in your mind, if you're having a war in your mind about true worship and the Holy Spirit and letting it out, then, you, then you're, not in your, you're not there yet. So you're going to get that thing down into here and let that worship out into humanity it sounds you know complicated but it's, it's really not it's, we gotta let go of so many things in our minds that are just holding us back and like pressing us into a little box also some people have record deals and they're afraid they're gonna lose their record deal if they i know i'm <laughs> mentoring people like that yeah and if i start like moving like this and that i might lose my deal and I'm like that's your choice Mm. If now you got to choose. You got to choose. Real talk. I'm telling you, if you find yourself, if you find yourself in the Holy Trinity, and He says, "Jump or go, go for someone in the middle of worship," that's the better way. So yeah, it's your choice. But no, God's not going to be mad at you if you don't. But we're just saying we want to see the power of the Holy Trinity moving out of us into humanity, and this is the way to do it. The way that we understand and the way that we have experience and hundreds and thousands of testimonies to prove that what we're saying is is doable and it's what the people are actually hungry for and especially the world yeah especially the world mm. yeah. that's beautiful i think that's a yeah. great place to kind of uh wrap up our conversation here i think we could go on and on for hours on some of these topics. They're all little threads we could pull and, uh, and go down these. I, I know both of you guys have opportunities for training for people that want to do more. I know David ATD is, is doing a worship school, uh, this fall. Maybe you could mention that. And then Susie, I know you're working on some online courses and training. And, uh, and then, so then maybe after David shares, you could just mention those for people so we can let people know, um, what's available. If yeah. They more. So, um, we're really excited. Uh, revived worship school is starting, uh, this fall, I believe in September. And so, um, you know, really a lot of what we're talking about here is what revived worship school is about, uh, lifestyle of worship, uh, and then obviously increasing your skill, um, you know, and all that kind of thing. But really one of the cool things about uh, revive worship school is to be able to go and do it. I think this is going to be the most unique thing that I've even done within a worship school because I've done worship schools before, but I think this is going to be awesome because you'll actually have an opportunity to go to the tents and do the do. So like go on the grounds and, and minister to the Lord. Cause that's really what we're, the school's about first is ministering to the Lord. But then you get to go and minister to the Lord in different cities and help other people do it train them, equip them, and minister to the city that you're in. So this is a very unique situation, and it's it's really cool. So if that is something that would interest you, not only do you love worship, not only do you want to minister to the Lord, not only do you want to get better in everything, but you actually want to go and do the stuff. Not just learn in a classroom, but actually get out 
and go to the cities and do it. Um, and it's not about the platform at all. It's about ministry unto the Lord and helping others do the same thing. Uh, then this is for you. And not to mention, we've got really uh, amazing special guest uh, instructors that are going to join us in person and via Zoom or something like, you know, like that. It's 2022 people. So, you know, we could do it all kinds of different ways. But, um, you know, Kim Walker Smith is going to be joining us. Uh, Susie will be uh, showing up. Uh, Gable Price uh, from Gable and Friends and, and Bethel Music will be joining us. Matthew Lilly will be teaching us uh, about uh, uh, some amazing stuff that from his book, uh, you know, Tabernacle of David, uh, Levitical things like Matthew uh, does, um, and many others, David Bradshaw. Uh, and so, yeah, it's going to be an awesome time, Misty Edwards. So you want to check it out. You can go to Revive School, the website, and check it out, and you can uh, see all the the uh, details there, but uh, it starts September, late September. And we'd love to see you if you could be a part. Yeah. Awesome. Excited about that. Someone mowing. <laughs> no worries. We've got a great audio editor. <laughs> can you hear it? Yeah, we can hear it a little bit, but we, but when you speak, so it's bad. clear. So yeah, go okay. for it. So I'm just basically doing the same thing David's doing with my um, personal stuff. Um, so there'll be courses, everything y'all talked about, and there's a whole Levite course, which, of course, Matthew, you will love, and I probably will read your book. And, uh, I didn't read it yet. I'm sorry. But I'll probably <laughs> use it. I'll probably use it, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> so, right, go for it. Um, I'm actually doing the Levite course. It's it's like each course has like seven short videos and then a little work a little work page thing goes with it, like five pages to help you remember. And um, so the set we're creating the set now for the Levite course, and it's a tent. It's a beautiful tent with pillows. It's very cool. My friend Stephanie's um, designing it. Actually, they're working on it right now, so we're going to do that this week. I was excited to tell you that, but um, that's so cool. I have, a new worship, I have a new website, SusieLoney.com. And on there is a landing page called Worship Union for worship consultation. And I have a team on there. So you can mix and match me and whoever else you want. David will be involved. Um, there's about 10 of us. And um, we are going to do everything we just talked about. And we can come to you or we can do it on Zoom, that kind of thing. So all of us will be still connecting. David, I'll be at ATD. David will be at Worship Union. We're going to keep this Love connection. It. And this community of Levites, yeah, modern Levites, we're going to keep it tight and flowing and open to the world. I love it. Amazing. We'll make sure all of those things get linked in the, in the show notes and description of the video and everything so people can click through and learn more. Guys, this has been an awesome conversation. Thanks for being on the podcast Thank you so today. Much, guys. Thank you, Matthew.